Father, we are grateful this morning for the song of joy, the song of salvation, the song of victory, the song of assurance that you have put in our mouth by your spirit. We are grateful for our gathering, again, a gathering of purpose, a gathering of instruction, a gathering of fellowship. Thank you, Father, for what you did during the Sunday school. Thank you for the revelation and the flow of the truth, truth that can stabilize, truth that can sustain and take us through this world, fulfilling God's purpose. We are grateful, Lord. Again, we are believing you for greater flow of your grace in this session of the service, that the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus and will establish the counsel of God in our lives. We receive the word of God like the word of God. We ask that the Holy Spirit will commission us this morning and empower us to fulfill God's purpose. Not only in our local community, but even in the world. Thank you, Father. Let the word of this morning come expressly and accurately. Changing lives, transforming destinies, and charting the direction that we must take for us. We will not be confused. We will not rebel against the truth. We will receive the truth and we will be blessed by the truth. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, everybody. I always come to church with excitement. Excitement that is going to be a very critical opportunity for fellowship. Fellowship, first and foremost, with the Holy Spirit. And fellowship with brothers and sisters. How many of you are happy to be in church this morning? Anytime you are coming to church, be excited. Because... God will do the things that man cannot do. The church is a gathering of God's people under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. It is a place of diagnosis and deliverance. There are many things that are wrong that people don't even know they are wrong. But the Holy Spirit will reveal them. And then the Holy Spirit will teach us the way out by the word of the Lord. So again this morning, I am confident in the Lord that you will go back better than you came in the name of Jesus. May you receive the word of God expressly and may you be blessed by that truth. This morning I want to continue from where we stopped. We're looking at pursuing the peace of God in the storms of life. And uh, last week, I began to look at the last uh, practical way to pursue the truth, the peace of God in the storms of life. Looking at First Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, we discovered that there are things that we must do beyond praying and fasting for the peace of God to happen. Either in our lives or in our homes, in our community and in the world. Jesus has given peace. So what we must do, we must do so that what he has given can be possible. When he was leaving, he said, my peace I live with you, not as the world giveth I give unto you. So don't be agitated, do not be confused, do not be anxious, do not do not get agitated. And if he has given us his peace, even in this stormy world, then we're looking at the things that we must be doing. To practically and effectively pursue that peace in our lives. Beyond praying, beyond fasting, 
what are the things that we must do? Number one, you remember that you will not use your tongue for evil or your lips for lies. That's what the Bible says. Stop using your tongue for evil or your lips for lies. Number two, you will turn from wickedness and shun it. That is repentance. You turn from wickedness, that is you repent, and then shun it means you resist the temptation to, res to return back to sin. The Bible says, tell a wicked man that he shall not be well with him. So, turning and shunning wickedness is a practical way to pursue peace. Number three, we must do the right thing and we must do things right. Not for some time, but all the time. Either we are in the church, either we are in our homes, either we are in the streets, either we are in the market, either we are in the working place, anywhere we are. Let it be your life principle that I will always do the right thing and I will always do things right. Our world is where it is today because people don't do the right thing. Our country is where it is today because people don't do things right. So for peace to happen, we we'll pursue it by doing the right thing and then by doing things right. And then number four, that's the one we started last week, we we'll strive for peace wholeheartedly. Striving for peace wholeheartedly. And my focus last week is that if we're going to, why do we have to really strive for peace? That tells you that peace is not automatic. Peace is not something that will just freely and easily happen. Peace is not natural. As far as this world is concerned. You remember last week, I began to show you the nature of this world. And that is why it is important for us to strive. Somebody says strive. To strive for peace. Because if we don't strive for it, it will happen now. If we only pray and fast, the world is structured in a way that peace won't happen that way. So we have to mean business. We have to be serious. We have to be determined. We have to strive for it. I told you last week that the godless people of this world are vain in their imaginations. The godless people of this world have a foolish and darkened heart. That's why there can be peace if we don't strive for it. The godless of the people of the world Always pretend not to need God. They appear to know it all. They don't want God at all. They take God out of their thinking, take God out of their system, take God out of their activities. And taking God away is like taking peace away. Because he is the God of peace. The godless people of the world, they worship the idol they made. And not the God who made them. That's why there is no peace naturally. And that's why we are going to have peace. We have to strive for it. Not just praying for it. Not just fasting for it. The godless people of the world refuse to know and worship God as God. The godless people of the world gave up on God. So God also has given them over to a reprobate mind to do things that are not convenient. You remember, the godless people of the world always take the wrong turn. Always take the wrong turn. Always take, do the, the wrong thing. Always think the wrong way. They don't, they don't live right at all. They are moving about in blindness and visionlessness. 
That's why there is no peace. Naturally, there won't be peace in the world except we strive for it. And our striving must be wholehearted. We must not pretend about it. Because of this natural situation of the world, because of the peaceless nation and nature of the world, I told you last week that every believer has a divine call as a peacemaker. You remember? Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemaker. Why? For they shall be called what? The children of God. So your identity as a believer is that you are a peacemaker. To be qualified to be called a child of God is to be ready to be a peacemaker. Making peace in the world is not my responsibility alone. It's also your responsibility. Once you are born again, you are called to be a peacemaker. It's a divine call. It's a call that is challenging. It's a call that is difficult but is a call that is possible. You remember that? So you don't have, to, I don't have the, the responsibility of going all over the world and making peace all over the world. No. I have the responsibility of making peace within my scope of operation. And as God continues to widen that scope, then I make peace as a peacemaker. Make peace starting from your home. The charity, the, 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 your, your, your charity as a peacemaker must start from your home. In your family. In your extended family. In your community. Your street. Is that okay? In your place of work. You shouldn't be the one that will cause trouble. You shouldn't be the one that people will say you are too difficult to deal with. Your life should reflect the peace of God. Is that okay? Praise God. Because that is your primary calling. You are not a child of God because you come to church. You are not a child of God because you carry the Bible. According to Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, you are a child of God because you are a peacemaker. Did you get it to that point? Now, today, I'm going to pick the second part. Because I told you, striving for peace wholeheartedly will take us three weeks. You remember? So today I'm looking at striving for peace wholeheartedly, part two. Striving for peace wholeheartedly, part two. Did you get that? So striving for peace wholeheartedly in this world of storms require that every believer must accept and pursue his or her calling and identity as a peacemaker. If we're going to have peace in this world of storm, every believer must accept and pursue his or her calling as a peacemaker. By the time we're through with this teaching today, you will agree with me that the key to peace in your home, in your family, in your locality, is in your hand as a believer. Is that okay? The key to peace in your home, in your family, in your community, in your working place, everywhere you are, the key to peace is in your hand. If every believer functions the way God wants us to function, you will discover that there will be peace everywhere. So when there is no peace somewhere, it means that the believers, they are not functioning the way they are supposed to function. So if, that, if, that, if we're going to strive wholeheartedly for peace 
in this world of storms, every believer must accept and pursue his or her calling and identity as a peacemaker. Last week, we saw that you are a peacemaker. Is that okay? This week, you must accept and pursue your calling and identity as a peacemaker. As a believer, irrespective of your status, of your color, of your tribe and background, you are first and foremost a peacemaker. And you remember last week I told you, you are going to make peace by the gospel of peace. You are first and foremost a peacemaker. When you become a child of God, no matter your color, no matter your tribe, no matter your background, that is who you are and that is what God called you to do. A peacemaker. Maker. Is somebody hearing me now? Tell yourself, I am first and foremost a peacemaker. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I am. Let's say it again. I am first and foremost a peacemaker. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I am. So striving for peace wholeheartedly cannot be a reality in our world until there's an accurate understanding of who a peacemaker is. So, my focus today is, if you accept your, if you accept and you are ready to pursue your calling as a peacemaker, so that there can be peace in our world, my focus today is, who then is a peacemaker? Is that okay? Who is a peacemaker? Because until we understand that, there won't, be, there won't be a way to strive for peace in the world. A peacemaker or peacemaker does not refer to a person or organization that make peace or settle personal, national, or global conflict as a profession. Right? That's what we know naturally in the world. But a peacemaker does not refer to a person or organization that make peace or settle either personal problem, national or global conflict as a profession. That's not, those are not the people Jesus was referring to. Let's read Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 again. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Did you get what I'm saying? So who are the peacemakers? Peacemakers are not, doesn't refer to a person or an organization that make peace or that settle personal conflict, that settle national conflict, or that settle global conflict as a profession. Those are not the people that Jesus is referring to. Do you know there are people today, there are organizations today that their profession is to mediate in crisis? How many of you understand what I'm saying? Now? Many of them are social workers. They mediate in crisis, maybe, maybe, maybe personal crisis, maybe national conflict, maybe global conflict. Many of them, that is what they have gone to the university to study. They study conflict resolution. A lot of them have degrees in psychology. A lot of them have degrees in sociology. A lot of them have degrees in philosophy. A lot of them have degrees in human behavior and all that and all that. Are you following what I'm saying? Now? So they now form an organization. And it is their profession. When there is a conflict in anywhere, either between people, between communities, between ethnic between nation, they would be delegated to go there to go and make peace and settle. Maybe there is boundary, there is clashes between two communities because of boundary. You have heard of situations where people, communities kill themselves 
because of land borders and all that. So they will send some people there. They say conflict resolution committee. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? To go and make peace, call the two communities, judge, judge talk, and then, and, and, and then make peace happen. And they say, well, even though the Bible says that blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Those are not the peacemakers that the Bible is referring to. Did you, have, did you hear what I said? Those are not the peacemakers that the Bible is referring to. Those are not the ones Jesus is talking to. Yeah. Because if you don't know what a peacemaker is, we will not know how to strive for peace wholeheartedly. Is that okay? So those people are just doing their profession. They are not the one, and since they have been doing it, have you have any peace in the world? That tells you that something is missing. Is that okay? Praise God. So you have to understand that. Jesus was not referring to peace envoys or government, or government mediators between communities and nations that are engulfed in crisis. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Peacemakers does not refer to security and law enforcement agents whose presence compels silence and artificial tranquility. Is that okay? The, the security agent, the army, I mean the soldiers, the police, the civil defense, the SSS, the DSS, whatever. All the security agents that we have, they are not the peacemaker that the Bible is talking about. You know, these are the people that when there is crisis in any place, government will send them there. And either the people like it or not. <laughs> ah, peace must return. No. Yes or no? Ah, by the time they shoot tear gas, by the time they spray pepper spray, by the time they beat some people, arrest some people, break their leg, arrest them, handcuff them, everybody will run away. And there will be artificial tranquility. Now, is that peace? May you not have the peace of a graveyard. Did you hear what I'm saying now? That's not peace. Everybody will just run away for fear of being arrested. But that is not, that's why you see the crisis will keep coming again and again and again. Because their intervention does not bring justice. They just want to either, they don't want to know that you are the one that is right. To do it, but they just break everybody, clear everybody, arrest people. <laughs> Baba, that's what I'm talking about. Praise God. Just I'm here to make peace and all that. It's not about talking, talking, talking. Nobody must come out. And then, you know what government will do in such places? They will impose a coffee. And everybody will stay in their house. That is not, those are not peacemakers. Oh. Soldiers are not peacemakers. Oh. Police are not peacemakers that Jesus is talking about. Oh. Did you hear what I'm saying now? The DSS are not the peacemakers that Jesus is talking about. Oh. Those people have no capacity for peace. They just instill and compel artificial and fraudulent tranquility. Peacemakers does not refer to governmental and non-governmental organization that mediate in all manner of economic and political crisis in different parts of the world. Man is trying to get, get peace without God. All these conflict resolution committee, all these security people, all these governmental, non-governmental organizations that are talking about peace, are just trying to have peace without God. It's man's vain attempt to have peace of God without the God of peace. Can you see how foolish man can be? It is man, when they send security to a place, when they send envoys, peace envoys, and all that to a place to resolve conflict, it is because man understands the value of peace. And they want the peace of God everywhere. But they want to do it without the God of peace. Peace is not what we use our brain to arrange. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's very, very important. The examples I have given can never be peacemaker. Because most times, the people that they, they, that they send to go and settle conflict and all that, most times they do not have peace with God through Christ. Many of them don't know Jesus. Many of them don't have the peace of God through Jesus Christ. Many of them don't have, the, they don't have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Are you with me now? And you can never give what you don't have. A lot of them are not born again. The soldiers will be sent to places of conflict. They will rape women there. They will loot the, 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 the community dry. Because are, they, are those people the people that will bring peace? Are you getting what I'm saying now? So all these non-governmental organizations and all that, you discover that eventually, eventually, they don't really, they don't really establish peace. The reason is because they are not born again. They themselves that are supposed peacemaker don't have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And that is why they cannot make peace between man and God and they cannot make peace between man and man. Generally, a peacemaker must have peace with God to experience the peace of God and to experience the peace from God. For anybody to be qualified as a peacemaker, he must have peace with God through Jesus Christ. A peacemaker must be born again, must know God, must have an encounter of God. He must be blessed so that he can be a blessing. It is when a person is born again, has peace with God through Jesus Christ, that he will be empowered to make peace and genuine reconciliation between man and God and to make peace and genuine reconciliation between man and man. Is that clear? That is why all these government peace envoys, all these non-governmental organizations, all these security operatives, security agents, have no capacity to bring peace. Because they themselves don't have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Authentic peace can be pursued and established by a peacemaker who first and foremost have peace with God through Jesus Christ. You can only give what you have been given. You can only give what you have been given. What you have not been given, you cannot give. It is not possible to have peace in the world by trying to arrange the God of peace out of your system and calculation. Praise God. Did you get that? Very, very important. So, today, I'm going to give you six basic um, qualities quality or identity of a peacemaker. Looking at the Bible. Because until we understand who a peacemaker is, it will be difficult to strive for peace wholeheartedly in the world. I'm going to show you, by the grace of God, six biblical descriptions of a peacemaker who is divinely empowered to strive for peace wholeheartedly in the world. I'm going to show you six biblical descriptions of a peacemaker who is empowered because of their encounters with God to strive wholeheartedly for peace in the world. Beloved, let me say this before I begin to go into the six descriptions. 
when you encounter God, that encounter empowers you to be a blessing. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I just said? When you encounter God, that encounter empowers you to be a what? A blessing. You can never be a blessing beyond your personal encounter. You cannot be empowered beyond your encounters. Let me give you two or three examples. Can you ask a man that has never gone to school in his life To come and be a lecturer in the university. Why? Because he has not been trained. So he has he cannot train others. He had not encountered training. So he's not empowered to train others. Is that clear? Can you allow somebody who has never gone to school to read medicine? To perform surgery on you? Can you allow? Why? Because he has not encountered medical training. So it cannot be a blessing to you medically. It's not empowered Powered to bless you medically because he's not, he has no encounter of medical training. God forbid if you have a case in court, will you go and hire a mechanic to come and defend you? If you do so, your prison terms will be life imprisonment. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Why? Because that person has not encountered legal training. So he cannot offer legal help to you. Beloved, the same thing. Those that will be peacemakers must have encountered the God of peace personally. It is that encounter that empowers them to function as a peacemaker in the world. That is why all these non-governmental organizations do not qualify as peacemaker as far as God is concerned. Social worker cannot solve spiritual problem. Do you understand? The problem of man is not psychology. The problem of man is not philosophy. The problem of man is spiritual. So that I have gone to collect degrees in university as a psychologist and I major in conflict resolution. <laughs> Cannot bring peace. Otherwise, our world would have been seriously peaceful because we have too many degree holders. Professors of psychology, professors of philosophy, professors of sociology. Praise God. I used to have a friend when we were in the university. His father is a professor of sociology from the University of Lagos. The mother is a professor of psychology from the University of Lagos. And then one will expect that their son will be well kept. But I discovered that this boy is just stranded, frustrated. My own father was a pastor and a farmer. And I will be the one giving him money. He will be coming to my house to eat. When you look at him, you will never think that his father and mother have gone to school at all. Nothing to show that the two parents are professors. 
in the prestigious University of Lagos. When you see the boy, you will see the, 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 the reality of a boy that is not attended to. No good cloth. No, sometimes the school fees will not be paid. So the young man has nothing. He is not settled at all. So he's just, he's just failing his courses, failing his courses, failing his courses and all that. Sometimes even to bab the air. It is some of us friends that will give him money to go and do that. And I was so concerned. I called him one day. I said, what, what, what is wrong? Your father is professor so and so. In the University of Lagos. Professor of sociology. Your mother is a professor of psychology. Professor of the University of Lagos. The two of them are University of Lagos. They were trained in Britain. Even this guy was born in Britain. He's a, he was a British citizen as at that time. He had the birth certificate of Britain in his hand. And I said, what is wrong with you? He said, the marriage of my father and mother did not last more than six months. Is kata. I said, what's kata? He said, is it grammar? He said, my father will speak grammar, my mother will speak grammar. And nobody wants to bow down for anybody. And it's kata. He said, I didn't grow up see them together. I grew up seeing them apart. So when I go to my father, my father will say, Go and go and go, go to your useless mother. When I go to my mother, my mother will say, go to your hopeless father. Say, they just keep passing me as a ball. That is where I am today. I said, what? He said, yes. Would you expect that a professor of psychology <laughs> and a professor of sociology will get married with all their learning and conflict resolution, human behavior, social thing and all that, they will still have no peace in their own home. The two people that cannot make peace in their own home, are they the people that will make peace in community? Talk to me. You never blame them. Making peace is a spiritual thing. They are not born again. They can't give what they don't have. They have no encounter that can empower them to be a blessing. Even to their own child. Not to talk of to other people. Did you get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that the security agency are not doing a good job. Thank God for them. We need them and we surely need them. Did you get what I'm saying? And all the non-governmental organizations, I'm not condemning them that they're not, thank God, let them continue to do their work. But the truth of the matter is this. They are not the peacemaker that the Bible is talking about in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Because Many of them don't have encounter with the God of peace. So, they cannot be empowered to establish peace between two people, between two communities, between two nations, and in our world. So, it is my responsibility, your responsibility, as a believer that have an encounter with the God of peace, to establish peace. Anywhere we find ourselves. According to Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Peacemakers are number one. Because the Bible says blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. They are children of God not by title. They are, they are children of God because of what they do. What do they do? They make peace between, between God and man and between man and man. That's why they are peacemakers. That's why they are children of God. So peacemakers are citizens of the kingdom whose hearts are truly and fully empty of things and filled with God alone. Peacemakers are citizens of the kingdom whose hearts are truly and fully empty of things and filled with God alone. 
Their heart is empty of material things. Their heart is filled with God alone. Did you hear me now? Those are peacemakers. Their heart is truly and fully empty of material things. Their heart is filled with God. That's why they can carry God to their generation. That's why they can make peace between man and man and between man and God. They are God-centered. They are not things or self-centered. How many of you agree with him that most of these security people are non-governmental, peace envoys and all that? Many of them are self-centered. And many of them are things and material centered. They will send them to go and make peace. They will be looking for the way to make themselves rich. A lot of them are bribable, if there is any English like that. That's why they cannot be established peace. Most people that are sent to go and settle boundary conflicts between two communities are looking for a way to profit from that conflict. That is why the conflict keeps reoccurring. Somebody looking to profit from a crisis is, going to, is not going to establish justice. Because it's hard. Is filled with things. My beloved, peacemakers have their heart filled with God, not material things. They are God centered, they are not things or self centered. In spite of their knowledge of God, they are passionately seeking to learn and know more of God and His ways on a daily basis. That's why the Bible called them as poor in spirit. No more God. Even though they have known God, but every day they passionately pursue to learn and know more of God. No more of God. No more of God. Because the more of God you know, the more prosperous you will be as a peacemaker. Did you hear what I just said? That's why the Bible called them poor in spirit. Look at what, what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you see now? Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, down like that. Explain verse 9. Verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Is that, correct? is that correct? For they shall be called children of God. The question is, who are the peacemakers? Number one, the peacemaker is poor in spirit. That is Matthew 5.3. How many of you understand what I'm sharing? Do you get it? That is a way that the Bible explains Bible. Bible explains Bible. In fact, that is, the best under, that is the best revelation of the truth. The Bible must explain Bible. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. What does he say? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called what? Children of God. The question is this. Who then is a peacemaker? Matthew 5 3 starts the answer. A peacemaker is poor in the spirit. Because they are poor in the spirit, that's why they are citizens of the kingdom. That's why their hearts are truly and fully empty of things. Their hearts are filled with God alone. They are God-centered. They are not thin or self-centered. Even though they have known God before, they are still passionately seeking to learn and know more of God and His ways on a daily basis. That's why the Bible refers to them as poor in spirit. They will never come and tell you we are rich in spirit. They are poor in spirit. Poverty of the spirit means I have, not known, I have not known enough of God. I want to know more of God. Did you hear what I'm saying now? A, poor, a person who is poor in the spirit is not proud. A person who is poor in the spirit is open to God. 
I have known you, but I want to know you more. I want to keep knowing you. I want to keep knowing you. I want to keep knowing you because as you keep knowing God, you will keep becoming a blessing as a peacemaker. You will keep becoming effective as a peacemaker. You must carry God in your heart before you can make peace on the earth. You must carry God in your heart before you can make peace on the earth. Is that okay? Amen. So anybody who is not a citizen of the kingdom cannot make peace. That is why striving for peace in this world of storm is not the primary responsibility of security agencies. Is somebody following me today? It's not the primary responsibility of uh, DSS. It's not the primary responsibility of psychologists, sociologists, social workers, and all that. It is the primary responsibility of every believer. Because our encounter with God empower us to be a blessing to our world. We can never give what we don't have. That's why peacemaker is poor in spirit. Filled with God in his heart. Did you get that? Number two. Peacemakers are those that have received divine comfort after genuine mourning for and repentance from their sins and shortcomings. So they have received divine comfort. Do you agree with me that you cannot comfort anybody if you have not received comfort yourself? You can only comfort people to the level of the comfort you have received. So peacemakers are those who have received divine comfort from God after they have genuinely mourned for their sins and repented from their shortcomings. Did you get that now? Those are the people that are, that encounter with God empowers them now. To give to their fellow men what they have received from God. If they have received divine comfort from God, after they have genuinely mourned and repented from their sin and shortcomings, then they are empowered to bring comfort and peace to the world. And they will be able to comfort and become compassionate for the people that are still in sin. In one word, peacemakers are those who have received divine restoration and comfort. From their broken fellowship and relationship with God. Every fellowship that man has with God becomes broken. When man fell into sin in the Garden of Eden. You remember that? That's why the Bible said in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So naturally, our relationship and fellowship with God is broken. Are you following me now? But when we genuinely mourn and repent of all our sins and shortcomings, we receive divine comfort and divine restoration of a broken fellowship and relationship with God. That encounter empowers us to give comfort to our world. That is a peacemaker. Is that okay? How many of you agree with me that there are many times in the world that when two people have crisis. The person you even call to come and say to crisis will be the one that will complicate the crisis. How many of you understand that? Either because he's biased, either because he's not ready to establish justice, or he's not ready to say the truth, or he's ready to profit from that strained relationship. 
So at the end of the day, instead of establishing peace, it will complicate the crisis. The crisis was in level one before. By the time he finished his work, the crisis will go to level seven. That is somebody who cannot give what he does not have. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now? So the peacemaker, in the language of the Bible, are those that mourn. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Mourn, not because somebody died. Though. Mourn because man has broken fellowship with God. And those that genuinely mourn for their sin and genuinely repent from their shortcomings will receive divine comfort and restoration of broken fellowship and become empowered to now bring comfort and peace to the world. Is that okay? Praise God. Are you getting something? That is what the Bible calls a peacemaker. Number three. Who are peacemakers? As far as the Bible, how many of you know that that is you that the Bible is describing? If truly you are born again. Or this description of the Bible, is it talking about the DSS? This description of peacemaker in the Bible, is he referring to one non governmental organization? Who is he describing? A born again believer. Somebody who has encountered Jesus. Who has who have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So when I was starting, I told you that the key to peace in our world is not with the government, it's with the believers. Do you agree with me now? The key to peace in our community, the key to peace in your home, the key to peace in your family, the key to peace in your working place is in your hand. As a believer. And I want to pray for you today. That may you be ready to pursue and accept your calling as a peacemaker. Amen. And may you be ready to have encounters that will empower you. For that assignment. In the name of Jesus. How many of you agree with me that if every believer in the whole world is operating like this in different arenas and corners that God has placed us. Don't you think our world will have peace? So, when there is lack of peace in the world, it's not the failure of God, it's not the failure of prayer, it's not the failure of fasting, it's the failure of believers who do not accept and pursue their calling as a peacemaker. The work that a believer should do, a security man cannot do it. A professor of psychology cannot do it. Grammar don't bring peace. In fact, in most places, grammar will scatter peace. Did you hear what I just said? Number three. Who are the peacemakers? According to the word of God. Those that have become, I want you to write this, this, this peer. I want to give some some. Descriptions in peers, in peers, in peers. And I want you to write it down. Peacemakers are those that have become meek and gentle. Peacemakers are those that have become meek and gentle. They are those that have become humble and simple. I hope that is discussing, that is describing a soldier, Abby. Or is describing a, a policeman. I think that is the description of SARS, Abby. You know who the, the police people they call SARS? I think they are meek and gentle. Huh? Praise God. <laughs> eh? I 
think this that this is describing Nigerian army. Have you? They are very meek and gentle. <laughs> or DSS. <laughs> Praise God. Peacemakers are those that have become one, meek and gentle. Did you get that? Two, humble and simple. Three, quiet and loving. Peacemakers are those that have become quiet and loving. A noisemaker can make peace. A cantankerous, violent ruffian can make peace. A person who bullies people with his speech and activity can make peace. Do you know some people, they will send them to go and establish peace and they will go to place, they get this community, this community, uh -huh. do you hear? Open your ears, yo, you, these two community. If I hear when again, I will deal with all of you. Is that, is that a peacemaker? That's a bully. That's an abuser of people with his words. Peacemakers are those that have become righteous and patient. Righteous and patient. Righteousness will make them never to compromise, never to be corrupted, never to accept bribe, never to be partial, always to stay with the truth. Righteous and patient. Peacemakers are those that have become peaceful and submissive. Peaceful and submissive. Peacemakers are those that have become helpful and enduring. Helpful and enduring. Helpful and enduring. And peacemakers are those that have become unresisting and unruffled. Unresisting and unruffled. Unresisting and unruffled. Wow. Wow. Generally, all that I have shared with you, the language of the Bible is that peacemakers are those that are meek. Beloved, meekness is not weakness. Peacemakers are those that are meek. I want you to sustain this one because I'm going to go over it again. Look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. Just keep that one on the screen for me. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. Blessed are the meek. Why? For they shall inherit the earth. It takes a quality of meekness to establish peace on the earth. Did you hear me now? It takes a quality of what? Of meekness. You don't go to university to study meekness. <laughs> they don't give you degree on meekness. Is that okay? Meekness is an encounter that a believer has with God. Our God is a meek God. And when you encounter him truly, truly, you become meek. That encounter empowers you now with the quality of meekness to become an effective peacemaker in this world. Is somebody hearing me now? Everything I'm sharing with you today tells you that if there is no God, there can't be peace in our world. As long as man doesn't want to have anything to do with God, man's effort to bring peace on the earth will be a failed effort. Because correct peacemakers are people that have encountered the God of peace. So look at the screen. Peacemakers are those that have become what? Meek and gentle. Meek, meekness and gentleness, is it your father ancestral quality? Talk to me. How many of us got meekness and gentleness from our forefathers? <laughs> what did we get from them? Anger and violence. You know, 
what the Yoruba say, Kibo, Mba, Agidi, Tito Minima. That's what we got from our forefathers. It is when we encounter God through Jesus Christ that we become meek and what? And gentle. Is that okay? Peacemakers are those that are humble and what? And sin. How many of you know it is an encounter? Somebody say encounter. A spiritual encounter. To be humble and simple. Humility and simplicity is not in the nature of man. It's not in the nature of man. No. Man is always proud. Man is not simple. Man is very wicked and very deep. Very corny, very fraudulent, very hypocritical. Man that will be smiling at you and that will be having serious offense against you inside. And he will say, no problem, no problem, no problem. And there is serious problem. Serious problem. <laughs> I'm saying, no, 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 no problem, no problem, no problem. And there are serious problem. A man that is going to sell you off to the enemy that is coming to kiss you today. That's man. But when that man encounter God, through Jesus Christ, he becomes humble and simple. Peacemakers are people that have become what? Quiet and loving. Oh, man is a noise maker. We make a lot of noise. Naturally. The quality of quietness and love and love comes from our encounter with God. And it positions and empowers us to be an effective peacemaker. Because until you know what it means to be a peacemaker, you cannot strive wholeheartedly for peace in the world. Is that okay? And then again, peacemakers are those that have become righteous and what? And patient. Righteousness, they cannot be corrupted. They cannot be compromised. They will say the truth. They will speak the truth. They will do justice. Righteousness and patience. And then those who have become peaceful and submissive. Can you see? Those who have become helpful and enduring. Those who have become unresisting and unruffled. Unresisting. What do I mean by unresisting? They are not the people that will give fire for fire. You curse my father, I will curse your mother, mother. That is unresisting. They say, hey, it's my father you are cursing. Your mother, your father. That is resisting, resisting. But peacemakers are all resisting. You send fire to them, they will send water to you. All resist. Somebody say, all resisting. You curse them, you curse them, you abuse them. They bless you, they bless you, they bless you. That is why we say unresisting and what? Unruffled. How many of you know that no man in human nature can qualify for this? So, encounter. Somebody say encounters. Your encounter empowers you to be an effective peacemaker in the world. That's why the Bible says, blessed are the meek. Because all that I have described here is just the biblical description of meekness. That's why I say meekness is not weakness. That is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is spiritual strength. Did you hear that? Praise God. That's why making peace in the world is your responsibility as a believer. My responsibility as a believer. Boko Haram has been in Nigeria ever since. ISIS in different parts of the world. Political crisis everywhere. People have sat down severally to settle. But because the people that are thinking of settling themselves don't have peace with God through Jesus Christ, 
So they are disqualified. They cannot make peace between man and God. They cannot make peace between man and man. We are the light of the world. But we will not be able to wholeheartedly strive for peace until we understand from the biblical perspective who a peacemaker is. Number four. Who are peacemakers? Peacemakers are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Or let me put it this way. Peacemakers are those whose hunger and thirst after righteousness have been satisfied. Those whose hunger and thirst after righteousness have been satisfied. They are hungry. They are thirsty for righteousness. And they have received satisfaction in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They are hungry for righteousness and they got the righteousness of Jesus. The righteousness of Jesus has satisfied them. They are thirsty for righteousness and they have, their thirst for righteousness has been satisfied in their encounter with Jesus' righteousness. Beloved, as a result of this now, they, are, they have the fruit of righteousness. They have joy. They have goodness and knowledge. They are blessed physically. They are, they, they are filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are filled with the fullness of God. Those are the things that show that their thirst and hunger for righteousness have been satisfied through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They are the people that we can successfully refer to as the incorruptible people. The people that cannot be bribed. The people that cannot be partial. The people that cannot be bought over. The people that will establish justice. The people that are reliable. The people that have the fear of God. And that's why the Bible described them in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. I hope we are still together. The Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So peacemakers are people that their hunger and thirst for righteousness have been filled, have been satisfied with their encounter with the righteousness of Jesus. They are not people parading human righteousness. The Bible says all our righteousness as human beings are like what? Fill the rags. They are not people parading human righteousness. They have encountered the righteousness of Jesus. That's why they are empowered to become incorruptible peacemakers. Is somebody hearing me today? How many of you know the story that happened when they caught a woman in the act of adultery? I know, one way or the other, probably because of their mischief, they allowed the man to escape. Or maybe the man bribed them. And they grabbed the woman. You know, human culture, especially African culture, is very hostile against women. Yes or no? Very hostile against women. The same thing with the Jewish culture. I remember recently, I think about two weeks ago, the Supreme Court gave a landman judgment that empowered female from Igbo land to have right for inheritance of their father. Which means for years. 
in that part of the country for years. Once you are born a female, you don't have a right to claim the inheritance of your father. With all our civilization. And I know some group took the, took the case to the court. And they took it up to Supreme Court. And Supreme, Supreme Court gave a judgment that women have right to the inheritance of their father. The same way that a man has right. Can you see how partial our world has been? If there is no Supreme Court pronouncement, many women, how many of you know that that pronouncement came at least about two weeks ago? How many, how many of you know that many women have been cheated? Are they the one that made themselves women? Is it a crime to be a woman? When I look at some men, they just, they just disregard women. They say, ordinary woman, ordinary woman. And I ask him, do you have a mother? Are you hearing me now? Because it's foolishness. If I can stand there and say, ordinary woman, last and last, woman, last and last, woman, last. Without that, woman, last, will you come to the world? Some of us men are very lazy. Thank God for women. Praise God. When we came from Lagos in 1980, and we came to Akure, you know the Ajebo, Ajebota life in Lagos, you know. But now we had to relocate. And then we got, I will first of all settle down in my grandfather's house at Okemesho there. We were there for about a year before we moved to Ayedo. And I remember my grandmother one day told me to go and uh, grind pepper. I never did that in my life before. Praise God. And I put the pepper on the stone. You know what I'm talking about. In fact, the first thing I said, I told her, I'm not a woman. How can you tell me to go and grind pepper? And the woman said, do, do they use your manhood to grind pepper? Go and grind pepper for me. And the woman is a very tough woman. So I couldn't resist. So I went there. And I was grinding the pepper. I was using the hand. I grinded the pepper grinding it. It wasn't easy, very tough. I just did it anyhow. And the next minute, I want to go and urinate. I used the same hand to touch my team. Bro, I saw hell. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Most young men are very lazy. You won't wash your clothes. You won't clean your room. Those of you that are parents here, when you have rooms, you have the room for girls, room for boys. Tell me which one is the neatest. <laughs> Enter the room for boys, you will run back. 
And then that same boy will become man and he will now say, ordinary woman. Somebody should slap him. What is ordinary woman? Women are very strong. Do you hear what I'm saying? I get back home, I sit back expecting my food. My wife also went to preach like I did. But she get back home, she goes straight to the kitchen. Still prepare food for me and all that. She is preaching now as I'm preaching here. I won't be stupid to say ordinary woman. There is nothing ordinary in a woman. A woman is very strong. Very strong. Very strong. Most of us men, when you have malaria, ordinary malaria, you begin to behave as if you are family two boy. They will help you carry your hand. You carry your leg. You carry your... Especially when you now see your wife. You now become primary one boy. You expect her to say, my dear, my dear, and all that, to take care of you, to check your eyes. To... Ah, 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 ah. Oh, galara washa. But when she is sick, you will open the room and say, ah, 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 ah. Are you still on bed? Are you still on bed? Did you hear what I said? She will be sick and she will still be cooking your food. And you see, ordinary woman, any, any local men, bush men, we say, Binyat, O Binyat, Atenito. What don't you do? Talk, you do, 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 don't follow culture. When you follow culture, you will abuse the women in your life. Is that okay? Let's follow the word of God. And so, by one way or the other, they allowed the man to escape. You remember where I'm coming from? And they brought the woman. And you know, those men, when they see women there, yeah, they came. They came. All of them have stone. You want to kill the woman. Depending upon self-righteousness. And they say, Master, we caught this woman in adultery. In the act, we caught her. And the Lord Moses said, she stone her. What do you say? And Jesus already saw the stones in their hand. They are claiming self-righteousness. And Jesus said, anyone that has no sin, out of all of you, should be the first person to cast the stone. It's like Jesus is saying, just give me five minutes. I will begin to talk about your sins, one after the other. <laughs> and they were convicted in their heart. Nobody was qualified to cast the stone. Because all of them have their own sins too. And they were throwing the stone down. Throwing the stone down. They all left. That's why the Bible says, all our righteousness are like filthy rags. That's why a natural man cannot make peace. Because a natural man has self-righteousness. But the peacemaker are the people that have encountered the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Their hunger and their thirst for righteousness has been satisfied by their encounter with Jesus. Number five. Peacemakers are those who are so merciful and peaceful Peacemakers are those who are so merciful and peaceful that even persecution, conflict, pressure cannot change their spiritual state of love.
persecution, conflict, and pressure cannot change their peace of mind or their compassion for others. It takes a merciful person to establish peace in the world. It takes a person with compassion to strive for peace in this world. If you are not motivated by compassion, you will not be effective as a peacemaker. If you are not motivated by mercy, you will not be effective as a peacemaker. And you must first be a, reci a, reci a, a recipient of mercy before you can give mercy. Nobody can be merciful without receiving the mercy of God. Don't forget, our encounters empower us to be an effective peacemaker. So, peacemakers are those who are so merciful and peaceful that even persecution, conflict, and pressure cannot change their spiritual state of love, cannot change their peace of mind, cannot change their compassion for others. Either you appreciate them or you persecute them does not change their peace-loving and peace-making nature. They have a peace-loving and peace-making nature that your appreciation cannot change it. Your persecution cannot change it. If you praise them, they will still do the right thing. If you condemn them, they will still do the right thing. They will, show they will show mercy not because you praise them, not because you condemn them. They will show mercy because they have received mercy from God. That's why the Bible describes them as those that are merciful. Even though they are persecuted for righteousness sake. Those are the peacemakers. Look at Matthew chapter 5, I read verse 7. And I read verses 10 and 11. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. Why? For they shall obtain mercy. Verses 10 and 11. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So the peacemaker are those who have received the mercy of God. Those who have received the mercy of God and the mercy they have received cannot be changed by appreciation of men or persecution of men. They have a nature that is compassionate. They have a nature of compassion. They have a nature of mercy. That is why that encounter has empowered them to Make peace in the world. Is that okay? Let me take the last one as we pray today. I hope you got something from today. Peacemakers are those whose chief pursuit in life is purity of heart and life. Peacemakers are those whose chief pursuit in life is purity of heart and purity of life. You cannot, you, cannot, you cannot be a peacemaker if purity is not your pursuit. You cannot be a peacemaker if purity of life, purity of heart is not your pursuit. There are those who understand and are convinced that purity of heart and life are the basic requirements that man can have with God. We are living in a world of hypocrisy, religious hypocrisy and blindness. But a man that is pure in heart knows that the basic requirement that God is looking for in the life of man is purity of heart. Go and check it. Anyone that does not have purity of heart and life 
cannot be a peacemaker. When your heart is not pure, when your life is not pure, you cannot make peace. Making peace actually demands the quality of purity of heart and life. And nobody can have purity of heart and life without an encounter with the God of peace. Peacemakers are those whose minds and conscience are pure. They have purified affection. They walk before God in truth and with a perfect heart. They always do that which is good in the sight of God. Beloved, let me say this, beloved. Peacemakers are those people who have passed the test and weigh on the scale of Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5. When you get home, I want you to go and do a thorough meditation on Psalm 15, verse 5. I shared that passage with some people yesterday. Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5. If you pass the test and you weigh on the scale of that sum, you will be a peacemaker. And I want you to give me Psalm 15 verse from, from verse 1. We'll start. By the time we look at that Psalm 15 verse 1 to 5, you will agree with me, beloved, that those that will pass that test, those that will weigh on the scale of that sum, are people that have encountered God. Psalm 15, 1 to 5 is not describing natural man. It's describing, it's describing the born again man. Is somebody hearing me now? How many of us have read Psalm 15 before? Psalm 15 before. Okay. Is it describing the DSS? Is it describing the peace envoys? Government peace initiative. Is it describing the civil defense? It's describing the born again man. The man that has encounter. Praise God. Look at what the Bible says here. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Great question, isn't it? Hello. Don't look at any other place now. Give me your full attention. Great question, isn't it? I believe that if you pass this test of Psalm 15, you will make heaven. Psalm 15 is one of the Old Testament scriptures that is giving us the account of a born again man in the New Testament. That walketh what uprightly. Is that the quality of a natural man? That's the quality of a born again man. A born again man is the man that has had encounter with God. Everything that Psalm 15 said is what Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 said. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Those are the peacemakers. He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness. Somebody look at me. Say, his walk. His walk. Wonderful. His walk. His walk. His walk is talking about his lifestyle. His walk is talking about his activities. He that walketh uprightly is not a cunning man, he's not a hypocritical man, he's a reliable person, he's straightforward, righteous, no corruption, no compromise. He doesn't say I'm coming when he's going. And he that walketh righteousness and what? Speaketh the truth in his heart. 
Wow. Somebody say, wow. Do you agree with me that these are the people that can make peace and speak the truth in his heart? Verse 3. He that backbited not with his tongue. How many of you know that backbiting will even complicate a crisis? When I hear that you are spoken negative about me, and you want to come and settle with me, will you work? He that backbited not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt. He is not celebrating wickedness. Are you hearing me now? And it don't work hard. Don't share low thought, low do do. I will come and see. Need to do it. One le man low wo lo water. So when it don't get me GBT, don't look at Kiri. Togbo wo yede herimo herimo. Ani ah ani o mami dada kari o mami dada. Ah kasi. Awata je o bito je o nikba bo. O we buru kuti wong pavi pe o moto mo wo dele ni ya ti baba eni eja ka yi pada. Toro mami mo wo dele toje ko le loja. E iton shi shi takun takun to do lori o to. Shubo to to da beni ko wo ye o ti si le ni. A poju pare. A ni kasi. A wa mafi wu niko. Oh, lo wu, oh, lo wu. A rata bure enda leko. Wa fun wala e fo wala e da yi ara e ru. Wa fun wala e fo wala e da li ara e ru. Just tori o li atati atate atate no ye. How many of you agree that that is happening in some families today? Imagine a do lori wipe omo to ba mo wo dele ba wo lo mo de se se Need to hear what I'm saying now E ton show to ton sise takun takun let's encourage him let's bless him n to ba mo wa je ko te wa lorun e je ka gbadura fun Money is not everything Let us be strong and firm on godly principle on hard work on truth Tori oro ta ba kojo lori oto lo ma pe bo to oro ta ba fi ro kojo koni se kini koni ta Did you get that? Eni ti eniyan ke niyan di gigan These days now four one niners are chairman of occasions What are we say, telling the young generation? That they also will be celebrated if they become fraudulent. Don't be fooled. Awon owo ton gbe jade lati nu po si o le lomi donate ni bi tantin launch ele ni kan ti de later so fun mo ya so gbe 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 ya e gbe re we re e o ko bi ti ko gbe kale praise god amen praise god let us celebrate godliness let us celebrate Hard work. Let us celebrate the truth. Do you hear me now? Am I fun when you're king and you face? Am I fun when you're king and you face? Am I am I am I sure we pay no you do see what I mean you do see show? 
enya kenya ofa fun e lo wo ko wo e fun ni ko mi o fe o wo yen je pe ti gbo wo wa dori o wa dori tori owo are you hearing what i'm saying now? in whose eyes a vile person is condemned but in what he honored them that fear the lord oh beloved those are the people that can make correct peace those who honor what god has honored beloved god honor the truth when you see a man speaking the truth that should be the man you should honor god honor hard work when you see a person working hard that's the person you should honor did you hear what i said you honor those who fear the lord he that swore to his own heart and changed not the meaning of that is that he is not a mouth or is not a man of 345 1000 mouth his word is his bond he is reliable When he speaks, he will fulfill what he has said. He won't say something and do another thing. How many of you know these are serious qualities for peacemakers? And these are proofs that a man has encounter with God. Because a natural man can never function like this. He that put it not out his money to usury, not take a reward against the innocent. Did you hear me? You can't bribe him. You can't bribe him. He hates bribe. He doesn't collect it. He doesn't give it. He doesn't collect it. How many of you know the enormity of the peace that will come to Nigeria if we stop taking bribe? Hello. Do you agree with me? Ti ti awon omo Nigeria o ba gba bribe mo. Alaafia we ba ma po. Everywhere now bribe they take bribe openly now. Yes or no? They take it openly. <laughs> when you are when the policeman stops you on the road, he's looking for what is he looking for? Especially the Latin Chicago guy. When you see a, a thief that is carrying AK 47, will you wait? Will you wait? One policeman was making confession. He said, When he started police work in a door here, beneath precisely. He said he will catch the thieves and his ogre superior will release them. He will catch them again. His superior will release them. After some time, he said he discovered that his own life is in danger. That the people he's catching are being released. So those people saw him as an enemy. So they are looking to finish him. So he said for his personal safety, he advised himself to also be to also join the thief. He said he became their informant. He will supply them gun. He will be the one to tell them where they should go and rob. And he will be the one to tell them when police is coming. He said because he thought that when he was, when he was catching them and his boss were releasing them, his own life is in danger. So in order to save his own life, <laughs> he has to be their friend. He said, he's looking for money. And those, those drivers don't understand. It. They say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> this is my particular. Not, you know, his money is given to me. This is particular. And then you can say, hey, you can say okay, okay, go, go, go. Go. Even if he carried the head of a woman being in his boot. Go, go, go. Are you hearing me now? These days now, when you want to give them, they look at this. No, 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 no. 
I don't want that one. This is what I, this is what I want. This is what I want. Praise God. As if that is not enough. What of the civil go to sectariat, civil service, civil service sectariat and all that. Before a typist will help you to type, you will collect something. It's a typist too. That's what is collect salary for. So you collect something. Go and process your gratuity and uh, your pension. In fact, they will tell you that it, you will have to pay some uh, percentage. Hopeless, lawless system. Are you hearing me now? Even so-called Christians. They will tell you this is office, oh, this is not church, oh. Huh? Is ah uh, ah uh, 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 office now? Uh, you are a church colleague. Uh, you must be bad now. A man that has worked processing his gratuity, they will ah, they will tell you we will take ten percent, we will take this percent, we will take this percent. The bribe that most of these policemen collect, they will tell you that. Uh, uh, it goes to IG. That if they don't bring returns, they will remove them from that location and bring other people that will bring returns. Everywhere you see bribe. How many of you know that bribe is in church now? Um, somebody will just come to the church. I hear they need to know. What you be from Pastor Dada? What is so see the beer meji? Pastor Brosso and so Brosso and so Paolo she did bro. It's everywhere. And that's why there can be peace, except this standard is followed. Not take any reward against the innocent. Take it in word against this. Look at uh, our children are having exams now. And you know, many people want to be supervisor. Supervisor, the room of we are <laughs> supervisor, especially the job man at English. Ah, uh, uh, one woman is from a gospel church, I know very well. And they told her to go and supervise English in a private school private secondary school in this apre she said she would collect 100,000 they had to beg and beg and beg before she can collect 50,000 would they staff were there ah staff were be molori ni ko si yarin at all You hear what I'm saying? Bribe. Amen. One day we went to buy some stuff for the church. Some of our gadgets. And when we got there, we we're pricing, we we're pricing, we we're pricing. We agree on the price. And then the man said, Hey, Oga. What should I write? I said, what? And he said, what should I write? I said, ah, ah. how much did we agree? And he said, I know, but uh, he said, ah. he said, I said, hey, write what we agree now. He said, ah, hey, okay. <laughs> you'll be different too. <laughs> you different too. Pastors like you, when they come, Brothers and sisters, committee members of churches, like when they come, if we agree for 50,000, they will tell me to write 80,000 there. I said, Not me. Yet I have no see. Oh, 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 o
go to my business when we you get what I'm saying now and when you are talking the truth they see you as a strange person <laughs> what is wrong with him and all that praise God he that doeth these things shall never be moved is that your Bible he that doeth these things shall what you agree with me that this is the life of a born again man. This is the life of a born again woman. That is why it takes people that have encounter that can make peace in our world. Let's rise up on our feet. <laughs> Beloved, I want you to rate yourself. Open your Bible to Psalm 15 as we are praying. This is a serious matter. Striving for peace in the world is your responsibility. It's my responsibility. But who must we be to be a person that will be able to strive wholeheartedly for peace? Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5, reveals who you must be. We are the cause of the problem of the world because most believers in different parts of the world are not fulfilling their responsibility. They are not who God wants them to be. All of us here, and several other places where we have people gathering together as believers. If everyone is like this, beloved, our world will be a better place. You cannot take responsibility for everybody, but you will take responsibility for yourself. Let's start with us. Did you hear what I said? Let us start with me. Do I pass on the scale of Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5? When you get back home, beloved, I want you to go and open it again and read it. Read it both in English, read it in Yoruba. If you have different translation, read it in different. Make sure you understand it and rate yourself. That's who we must be as believers before peace can return to our world. Before the God of peace can return to our world, that is who we must be. I want you to ask God. You know, on a larger scale, we have failed God. On a larger scale, we have what? We have failed God. On a larger scale. But today, let's be humble and say, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Change my heart and let it be yours. I will not fail you again. I will not be the problem of the world. I will be the solution that the world is looking for. As from today, Lord, I choose to be a peacemaker. I want you to talk to God today. Everywhere I have missed it, Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. This is our calling as a peacemaker. I will not disappoint you again, Lord. The life you live will determine how effective you can become as an instrument of peace in the hand of God. The life you live will determine how effective you can become as an instrument of peace in the hand of God. I will be an example of godliness. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I will be an example of godliness. In my home, in my family, in my community, in my street. I will be an example of godliness. In the name of Jesus. In my place of work. 
my own will be different for God. My life will bring glory to God. I want you to pray. My life will bring glory to God. People will come to know God through my life. People will come to know God through my life. In the name of Jesus. I will not be a bad example. I will not be an ungodly example. Break me down and mold me again, Lord. Everything that does not, that is not of God in me, I take authority over them today. Every Adamic nature, I pull them down today. Let the power of the Holy Ghost take over my life. I choose to live right. 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 I choose to speak the truth in my heart. I choose to be who you want me to be. In the name of Jesus. My community will have peace because of me. My home will have peace because of me. My family will have peace because of me. My place of work will have peace because of me. My church will have peace because of me. Everywhere I go, I will be an example of godliness. Let the anointing of a peacemaker rest upon me. I choose the life of a peacemaker. Encounter. Encounter that empowers me to be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Let's talk to the Lord today.